Part 2. Accretion Theory This idea suggests the Earth and Moon formed from the same local gas cloud by a process called accretion. Very briefly, in astrophysics terms, accretion is basically how stuff gets made in space and where our solar system actually came from. It starts with a cold gas cloud, the centre of which heats up and starts to collect in mass, often forming a star, sometimes a black hole. This cloud then collapses into a disk which orbits the mass in the centre. Particles get bigger through the gravitational snowballing effect, the fancy science verb for this being coalesce, and said particles eventually get get big enough to form planets, asteroids, and very, very, very small rocks. While this idea for lunar origin seems like a fairly realistic proposal, after all, it's where the solar system came from, it's far from perfect. For example, if both the Earth and Moon came from the same accretion disk, they would be similar in size, and in case you hadn't noticed, they aren't. Plus, if they form from the same accretion disk in such close proximity to each other, why are they made up of very different materials? Yes, this theory would explain the all-important oxygen isotope ratio, which is identical on both bodies, however, the rocks that contain said isotopes are made up of very different materials. Now adopting the maths hat again, the Earth-Moon system has way too much angular momentum going on when compared to other planets whose moons did actually form from an accretion disk. Looking at you, Jupiter and Saturn, you see, if the moon was formed via the accretion theory, and given the mass of the Earth-Moon system, the moon is orbiting the Earth way faster than it should. See, angular momentum is calculated by the product of orbital radius and the linear momentum of the object, where momentum is mass times velocity. Since the moon's current mass and orbit cannot be changed, that leaves the velocity of the moon being the dodgy variable in this overabundance of angular momentum. Since energy can neither be created or destroyed, just passed on from one form to the other, the extra kinetic energy required for the moon's speedy orbit it would have to come from somewhere outside the accretion disk. We can't really account for this right now, so it remains a very big flaw in the accretion theory. It's also worth mentioning that when some papers talk about the Earth-Moon accretion disk, it is centred around a black hole, implying said black hole would have to be positioned somewhere between us and the Moon. There is no black hole between us and the Moon. Kind of implausible, right? Well, just wait until you hear the next theory. Before we talk about the next theory, I should point out that A, I have been overly harsh on the guy who came up with the idea, Professor Dave Stevenson, and B, I am actually a huge fan of his work. The reason why Professor Stevenson suggested this idea is to highlight that even the best theories of lunar origin still have many unanswered questions and should continue to be challenged. The Earth got its moon from Venus. Right, back in 2013, this guy, Dave Stevenson, proposed the idea that the Earth stole the Moon from Venus based on the following assumptions. 1. The Earth and Venus are similar in size and formed in a similar fashion. Yep, that's right. 2. Even the best lunar origin theories don't explain everything. Also true. 3. We don't have any rocks from Venus to compare with those from the Moon. So for all we know, the Moon may have come from Venus. We just can't prove it yet. Okay, let's look at this. So if Venus did have a Moon, which is guessed to have come from another giant impact, by the way, how did the Earth manage to get it? Why, it was knocked out of its orbit by another impactor, like some sort of planetary snooker ball. And the Moon just so happened to swing our way. Now, calculations have been done on this, and the dynamics are not impossible, but they are highly unlikely. And I mean highly unlikely. Like getting struck by a comet after winning the lottery levels of unlikely. Even the brain hammer behind this theory, Professor Dave, said there are better, more plausible theories out there. So let's just knock this one on the head and talk about a real theory, shall we? The Giant Impact Hypothesis While this may sound like a highbrow remake of the Big Bang Theory, this is the most convincing argument for lunar origin. 4.5 billion years ago, Earth was hit by Theia, an object with the mass of a planet and roughly the same size as Mars. The impact was so great, Theia was essentially engulfed by the Earth, and materials from both bodies were thrown up into space where they quickly fell into an orbit around the single entity of Earth plus Theia. Over a very short time, the orbiting materials started to coalesce into the moon we see today. Thousands of computer simulations have suggested this is very feasible. Plus, there is also hard evidence in the rocks brought back from the Apollo missions. These rocks contain the all-important near-identical oxygen isotope ratio that is also found in the rocks on Earth, thus strongly indicating that both rocks have a common origin. Now, this theory isn't flawless, and there are issues involving the presence or lack of certain elements on the moon. There also appears to be discrepancies in the angular momentum and ironically, there is an issue that both the Earth and Moon are too chemically identical. Why is this an issue, you rightfully ask? The argument basically says, if Earth was hit by Theia, why is there no chemical trace of it? The best and brief explanation I can give for that now is, Earth ate Theia, like Pac-Man. 
Since this theory was proposed in the 80s, many variations have been suggested to explain these discrepancies. Originally, it was proposed that Theia hit Earth with a glancing blow. This was to account for the Moon's current orbit around the Earth, but in 2012, it was suggested that a rapidly spinning young Earth was hit head-on by a much smaller object, something with about 2% the mass of the Earth. This theory would not only place the Moon in its current orbit, but also explain the identical chemistry of both bodies. New ideas are still being proposed, and in January 2017, Researchers in Israel have suggested the moon was formed by not one impactor, but dozens. These smaller, but constant, impacts kicked up material into the orbit around the Earth, material which eventually coalesced to become the moon. Though it's not perfect, the giant impact hypothesis and its many add-ons are the best answer we have for the question, where did the moon come from?